Bear Bets is back. Week five of the NFL season. I am Chris the Bear Felica, soon to be joined by Sammy P and Will Hill in the gambling group chat. And I will bring in my co-host Jeff Schwartz at this time. And Jeff, I think we saw another example Sunday night of the massive rigging and fixing of games in the NFL how dare how, with that. how Patrick Mahomes knew the point spread. And he knew that if he scored, he would have covered. And he knew the books needed the needed the Chiefs. Yeah. And, and it was he, he was in on the big fix, right? Yeah. So I, you know, I, I I've been injured in, in my NFL career, and when I'm injured, I, I put on the little quarterback headpiece. I could hear like the you know the the quarterback mm-hmm. coach or whoever in a, a radio in the play quarterback. And I heard all the time like, "Hey, man, hey, Eli, just let you know the point spread is this. Make sure you do this on a certain play." It it's just the lamest way to talk about sports. It's to complain about players, referees, coaches, knowing the point spread. And there are times when it does seem like, you know, the Sean McVay field goal a few weeks ago to, to only lose by yeah, seven. I have no idea what, what he like, was doing. Th- there. there are times where it does look like it might be the case, but it just feels like the lamest way to watch sports, right? I know we have money on these games. I know that there are times we lose. I lost a USC over last weekend by half a point. Like, I was furious about it, but I didn't accuse USC or their kicker of missing kicks on purpose to not cash the bets. I just feel like the lamest way to watch sports is to think about all the ways they're trying to screw you out of uh, out of your wager. The Chiefs were not inside the number for, like, over 30 minutes. Right. It was, they were up 17 nothing, and then when it got to 17-10, 17-14, they're out of the number. Like, right. that's it. It was 17-12. It was, like, a weird score. Yeah. It was, like, a baseball score for a little bit of time. It was a weird score. Um they were out of the number. And then the other thing that I think just frustrates me a lot when, when people watch sports, and I get like referees are part of sports, right? We, we, we see it happen all the time is this idea that, you know, a, a league favors someone, favors someone else, and, and they, they're rigging games based on this. It's just, it feels like the lowest common way to watch a game, man. Like I'm a, I'm a fan first, and I obviously play in the NFL. But even when I was a fan as a kid or even a fan now, I'd never thought like any of those things before. Like the, the, the penalty hawks, people looking for penalties. It just feels a weird way to watch a game, man. I don't get it. Why are we doing this, guys? I, I think, I, again, it, it, people just don't like the Occam's razor theory of like it's the most common explanation. Oh, by the way, all Patrick Holmes needed to do was to slide, get the first down, not score, so he could just take a knee and end the game. I was the only... 100% chance that the Chiefs the win the game is if he gets the first down, he doesn't score to keep the ball, knee, ball game. He scores, yeah. chance to get the ball back, and yeah, maybe it's a astronomically slim possibility, but the possibility, zero is zero, whereas yeah. whatever that is not zero yes. is not zero. Correct, so. and so he made, he made the right choice. Look, the, the officiating, I get it, you know, I think Sauce admitted he sort of held him, but like didn't think it was bad enough right. to actually yeah. be called. Oh, he held him. And, but- and so the question is again, like I see the argument of, well, the refs shouldn't call penalties in those situations because of the end of games. I used to sort of feel that way, but then I think about the entire game. Like, what is that? What's different between that and what happens second quarter? If it's a penalty in the second quarter, it's a penalty in the fourth quarter. And and that was directly in front of the referee, and the ball was thrown that direction. If that if the ball was thrown the other side. Probably, probably doesn't get called, right? You're, right? you're not supposed to call penalties that really affect plays. And he held them. Like, he held them, shouldn't have done it, got a penalty, move it along. And so, I, it just, it, it's just, it's social media makes it worse, right? Because we can complain about <laughs> stuff. We, you know, and, and the referees, guys, they watch the plays in full speed one whole time. They don't get slow-mo replays. They don't get zoomed in. They, 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 they don't get the benefit of, of watching it multiple, three, four, five times, Bear. And so... I don't know. I just despise the way we talk about these games when it comes to officiating and uh, and and gambling. Sometimes on social media. Sometimes I'm, I'm, old, I'm like, this is my old man rant. This Get is, off my lawn. It frustrates me. But the Chiefs, look, um, they're terrible in those situations. On the road is big favorites. Uh, they go back on the road this weekend is a you know, not a big. Favorite, Numbers come down favorite. too. Vikings getting some money. Yeah, I'm not surprised there. The Chiefs' offense is, is fascinating so far. I think it's a storyline we haven't talked very much about because we just expect them to be fine. Their defense has been outstanding. Their defense is good enough to win a Super Bowl. Like their defense is fine. Offensively, they gotta they gotta find some sort of intermediate option. But I trust Mahomes. People on the Vikings, huh? That's a lot. Of, it's interesting. I, I, Would you be in the Vikings? Hell no. Yeah. The, 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 the list. The, the, it's funny. The list of teams that I don't think I could ever bring myself to play: Vikings, Chargers. Oh, jeez. How about the Chargers this weekend? Again, the, the, the same charging as usual. Like, you, you go for a fourth down because you're smarter than everyone else. You get stuffed again on fourth down with a quarterback who has a broken finger, who can't hold the football. You're playing a rookie quarterback 
I think they had less than two timeouts, maybe three time, maybe one or two timeouts, who have to drive the length of the field to score a touchdown on the road in his first professional start, and you go for it and get stuffed. And then... A when when you really hadn't been running correct. the ball all game. Correct. And, yet- and then you have an interception. You're up seven again. And it's outside of two minutes. And you don't tell him to score a touchdown. Like, Staley's like, get down, get down, get down. Like, no, score a touchdown. Like, you score, you have 14 points, you win. It's but you and Aiden O'Connell to the end zone. That's it. They're just a poorly coached team, man. It's so frustrating. They're wasting a generational talented quarterback because Brandon Staley is, is still their head coach. Frustrates me a lot. Do you have any gripes? I've, I've been screaming about football. Do you have any gripes to, to, off your chest? Uh, no, I'm I'm relatively calm this week. I sound like an angry and angry person. Today. No, I'm I, I like person. usually I'm the angry person, so I feel I'm, angry, I'm, I'm happy I'm that angry. you're you're the you're the animated one today. Yeah, I just it's you know I've, I've been holding this stuff in. I, I try not to to go off on social media very often. I use this this platform to get angry. So now we're we're angry. Uh, I used the platform to get angry last week. It worked. <laughs> but you got your money back, so that's you good. Back, I'm happy. Let's get to your wagers now. We'll have some we'll have some fun here. Uh, you have three wagers before we get to gambling group chat, and then our best bets at the end of the show. Titans at the Colts. Colts are again two and a half. That number has moved in their direction. The total is 43. Both teams are two and two. The Colts losing to the Rams on Sunday in overtime. The Titans blew up the Bengals. Uh, the, uh, the Titans have lost both the road games this year, but a 3 1 against the spread. The Colts have uh, won both the road games, lost twice at home, and they are two and two against the spread. Bear, where are you going here? Doesn't this feel like one of those typical, like, because it's the NFL type of games? Titans played so well last week shutting down the Bengals offense uh, the, the Colts fall behind came back tied the game ultimately lost in overtime doesn't this feel like now, now Tennessee yeah. laying points on the road I, I don't know if they should be I will happily take the Colts plus the two and a half so I, I do think maybe there's a chance Jonathan Taylor is back for the Colts so that in theory could help them uh, like I said I think the Titans going on the road here I think that's a uh, a dangerous spot and for a team that certainly still has its offensive deficiency so Give me the uh, give me the Colts uh, plus the points here, and I'll probably uh, throw a little on the money line as well. Correct me if I'm wrong here. The Titans have not scored a touchdown on the road this season, right? They, they, they had what five field goals, five field goals in Week One, yep. and they lost twenty-seven to three in Cleveland, right? Yes. Yeah. So they all looked awful. Zero touchdowns on the road this season. Um, when they're a home dog, I will throw as much money as I can on on, on Mike Vrabel. Yep. It's a great wager. I was with you last weekend um, hosting the Bengals, but when they're a road favorite, absolutely not. Like no chance right here. Overreaction from the Colts losing in overtime last weekend. They've they looked bad in the first half, better in the second half. Richardson's going to have those moments where he's up and down, but the the the, the, the Titans' offense is atrocious. Um, all right, let's get to your second wager here. Uh, we're going overseas, going to London here, Jacksonville is getting five and a half points or plus five and a half. Uh, it's at Buffalo, but it's in it's in London. Uh, total 48 and a half. Jacksonville's two and two. They've covered in both their wins, including last weekend against Atlanta. That game was also in London. And Buffalo is three and one, having scored 38, 37, and 48 points in their last three games. Where are you going, Bear? Well, the Bills won that what basically was their Super Bowl last week. It was clear that they uh, took that game personally. A lot of the narrative going into that game personally. It was great to see DeMar Hamlin. Uh, back on the field as well. But th- this number looks a little short right here at five and a half. Um, again, because it's the NFL. The Bills have looked great the last three weeks, unstoppable on offense. Jags haven't necessarily looked like the team that we thought that they would be uh, for much of the year, still having trouble scoring points. That was more of like what we thought with bad Atlanta last yeah. week. We got through survival with Jacksonville last week, yeah. which was great. Um, but maybe. I got to take five and a half now because we're recording this show now. I think there's a chance this number might hit six. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to wait and maybe yeah. put a little bit more on, uh, on Jacksonville come, come Sunday. But I, I do like, I do like the spot for the Jaguars here being that they've been over there. Buffalo off the emotional wins. Yeah. Got to go all, all the way across. Uh, so it's a weird travel and prep week for them. So, uh, so give me uh, give me Jacksonville plus the points, and I'm hoping to get six by kickoff. It does feel like a little bit of a Josh Allen YOLO game. Like we haven't had those in a couple <laughs> weeks. We haven't had we, we had one we, game we, one. <laughs> we, we haven't had them in a while. He's been so Josh Allen's been really good. The offense has been played so well. They're you know they're just they're scoring so many points now. 
the one concern I have about Jacksonville is they're not scoring points on offense. You know, last weekend it was what 17 points on offense or 16 points on offense because yeah, they had they that, pick, that, six. The pick six, nine against the Chiefs, 17 I think against the Texans. Um, and let's say Buffalo scores 28, 31. Are they going to score no points, Jacksonville? But the spot, I think, is correct here on this play. Everyone's going to be on Buffalo this weekend, not on Jacksonville. Let's get to your other game. This one's fun, man, because I feel like this is um, a contrarian pick that makes a lot of sense here. Uh, Bengals on the road in Arizona. Bengals are favored by three. It's actually a two and a half that okay. just popped it's right now as well. Two and a half. The live wagering, two and a half right two, now. There are two and a half that have popped. Total's 44 and a half. Both teams are one and three, but they've gotten it to here in different ways, right? The Bengals are supposed to be good. Started the season poorly. Joe Burrow's calf injury is hurting them. Arizona was supposed to stink. He's supposed to tank. They've been competitive in all four games, even in a loss to Niners last weekend. Where are you going here? I mean, I'm, I'm taking the discount on the Bengals. Yeah. I mean, even as bad as they have looked offensively, as immobile as Joe Burrow has looked uh, with that calf injury, yeah. this number has been one-way action, straight plummet. Uh, Everyone is on the Cardinals. This game, the sign opened up at six. And look, I, I get why you bet the Cardinals at six, but I don't understand why you're betting the Cardinals at three. Like yeah. you, you, missed, you missed the boat. It, I just refuse to believe that. I don't want to say I refuse to believe, but I, I think it's a little bit of a, a combination of a, an overreaction to how good the Cardinals might be because they've been competitive. Uh, and it's, there's definitely a reaction to, but I didn't think the, the, the Bengals would be great entering this year. Uh, and they have basically performed how I thought they would. Mainly yeah. the borough injury has been has been what it was. But like I think maybe some of the Cardinals' success has just kind of been circumstantial. I do have my concerns about the Bengals offensively, but I do think maybe the uh, the locker room outburst from Jamar Chase last week was a good thing. Yeah. Maybe he got some of the grievances uh, out in the open and maybe they'll be. Well, is he open or not? Is he open? Is Jamar Chase open or not? It's always open. It's always open, yeah. It's always I'm open. open every play. Yeah, open every play. Um, I think it's a great spot to buy in the Bengals. Uh, it's back against the wall against a team that has won now for many years. They go one and four. I mean, one and three, you're like, season right. one, one and four, like, especially when they have this two game stretch where they need to win both these right. games before they're by. And then after the bye, it's the Niners and the, the Bills and the Ravens and the Chiefs. Like, it's all the tough teams after the bye. Back against the wall. Uh, the thing about Joe Burrow's calf is it limits his mobility, right? And teams that are able to hit him, to rush the passer, are able to affect him. I don't think Arizona's that team, right? And the Bengals defense has played fine. They've been a little bit, they've reverted back to mean a little bit. Uh, this is a, two and a half, are you kidding me? Two and a half, I mean, what was the look ahead on this game you think Six, in, in July? Eight, oh, eight probably, eight, eight, eight nine. nine. Oh, yeah, yeah, eight, nine. So, good spot for the, for the Bengals right here. Let's recap the wagers the Bear has made so far in this show. These are real wagers that he does make. I watch him do it. He, he wagers like live during the show on, on random uh, overseas uh, soccer and stuff. Uh, Colts, uh, plus two and a half at home against the Titans. You have the Jaguars, plus five and a half in London against the Buffalo Bills. And you have the Bengals now two and a half. At the, on the road, it's like two and a half there. That's crazy. Two and a half. But that number feels way too low. Well, let's get to our gambling group chat now. It's going to be me. It'll be the Bear. It's Sammy. It's Will Hill. We talk everything NFL. We cover all the games of the week, our favorite wagers and our favorite futures now, who we're fading, uh, where we got things right and wrong. A great gambling tra- group chat as usual. Here that is. Will Hill, Sammy P, Jeff, and myself. Can't time for the gambling group chat, NFL style. Uh, before we start talking specifically about this week, I was curious. Like we all have our preseason thoughts, expectations, power ratings, wagers, whatever you want to call it. Like now we kind of actually have some data out there. And I guess the, the Cardinals are what spurred this on for me just because we all thought the Cardinals were going to be this tanking team, may not win a game, worst team in the league, uh, number one draft pick. Maybe they pick first and second. And it's clear that they actually are a functional, a competitive football team uh, after four weeks. So four weeks in, uh, Will, is there a team, what team out there, if there is a team, that you've kind of made the biggest adjustment for either in your power ratings or just your opinion of uh, for, for better or for worse so far this year? I mean, I mean, it has to be Arizona. A lot of the metrics have them in, in the middle of the pack, but you mentioned Arizona, so I'll go a different way. And this is one, look, we get things right. We get things wrong. We, we've all kind of been anti-Cincinnati. And I mean, look, p- part of it is 
Uh, their numbers last year, the quarterbacks they beat, maybe a little misleading. Maybe they were a little overrated, but the quarterback is just not healthy. He can't move. He can't run. He's a sitting duck in the pocket. And they're just, they're damned if they do, damned if they don't, because this is a rest from whatever, you know, all the doctors say. It's not going to get better unless he sits out for two or three weeks. But, you know, at one and three, if you sit out for two or three weeks, you come back, your season's over. But if you play through it, you're not effective and your season's going to be over. So to me, since he's just a shell of themselves, uh, they've been really bad here. So to me, it's the Bengals. We, we thought this was, you know, I think a lot of people probably had, you mentioned power rankings, uh, Chiefs, Bills, Bengals, Eagles. Those are the four teams, maybe Cowboys right behind it. Bengals to me are a bottom third team in the league as currently, you know, constructed with Burroughs injury. So it's got to be the Bengals, you know, as well as the Cardinals. Sammy, you same question. I've up the Ravens the most. Um, I was high on them to begin with, but I've got them basically equal with the Eagles right now. I got Bills, Niners, Ooh, Chiefs, wow. Cowboys, and then Ravens, Eagles on the five line together. Um, I'm very high on the defense, and Lamar has been playing really good, even without J.K. Dobbins. They've just basically been able to plug and play many different guys, including the rookie receiver out of Boston College. So I, I like what Baltimore's done. And then conversely, on the bottom, like I've knocked New England down a whole lot. Uh, Matthew Judon is going to miss multiple months. Christian Gonzalez, who was right there for defensive rookie of the year, he's out for the season. The Belichick defenses are basically bend but don't break. And without two of their most impactful players on defense, the dam might flood. Now, I I've got them like 26th. I think coming into the year, I had him like 18th or 19th. Kenny White in Vegas has him tied for 29th with the Giants. So he's even lower wow. on the Pats than I am. Clearly, their offense sucks. It was funny around here in Boston. It was like, well, if they, they only had an offensive coordinator. Well, actually, they need a quarterback, not an offensive coordinator. It's when I actually played New England under seven and a half earlier this week. But you're circling back quickly to your Ravens deal, is part of your – or maybe it's the part of the adjustment, like the fact that they haven't had a healthy team and they're still doing this kind of me, doesn't does it kind of mean that the, there's, there's still a good bit of ceiling for them to even get a, a higher number. No, I still think they can win 11 or 12 games. I mean, we've adjusted obviously the win totals and the division prices. We had our, our podcast before the season. And I think that was the one team that I was talking about Baltimore over the win total at 10 and a half and uh, to win the division uh, at the time they were like, two to one, 220 behind Cincy. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they're very good on both lines. We know they have maybe the best special teams weapon in the game and Justin Tucker at kicker. They never leave points off the board. Um, Harbaugh consistently churns out winners. This team just does everything right. They they never really beat themselves. And, and they also punish poor teams. Like the Browns roll in last week without Deshaun Watson. It was never even a game. Like, then again, they did lose to Indianapolis the week before to Gardner Minshew. So maybe they, <laughs> maybe they do have the occasional letdown, but this is still a very highly power rated team. I think I've been wrong most on, on two offenses this year. I, Sammy mentioned the Patriots. I, I did think that with a better offensive coordinator, we saw Mac Jones in year one wasn't bad. He wasn't great. He also wasn't bad. And last season he had two defensive coordinators that were calling plays. And now this year he has a real offensive coach in Bill O'Brien who has had success everywhere he's been. It's very clear Mac Jones is not that guy. It's very clear. Like they got to find a, I saw a quarterback mock to them already and mock drafts for next year. And the other teams, the, the Steelers, like we saw glimpses last year of Kenny Pickett being able to do some really good good things in their offense and they have been horrific on offense i know he might not play this weekend but they have just their offense line has not been good the play calling is atrocious which you sort of already knew with man canada but again there were there were moments last season where where pickett overcame that george pickett is a fantastic wide receiver they can't get him the ball enough like to me I, I was wrong about pittsburgh's offense their defense is still really good maybe tomlin ekes out nine wins and they they keep that uh that that uh that, that over 500 streak going for so many years now but i'm dead wrong on pittsburgh yeah, it certainly looks like offensively they've got a lot of things to fix. A team that doesn't appear to have a lot of things to fix on offense are the San Francisco 49ers. Like, there are a few things that get me as excited and animated and bring me as much pleasure as watching the 49ers play football. I, I just, Jeez. I just love their offense, and I, I it, it's, it. I mean, they, they're, they, they are just a, a great team to watch, and I. I'm not going to enter this game with, with a single cent wagered on it. Um, I have, I've already maxed to the gills with 49ers futures. 
Uh, maybe I'll hop in live, but I can't wait for Sunday night for uh, for, for Dallas, San Francisco. It, it's it's going to be, a, I think, a great game. Dallas has played them tough in the playoffs the last couple of years before the Niners ultimately won. Uh, but both of those games, I see, uh, see mostly three and a half out there now. Uh, Dallas obviously had a point to prove, I think, last week uh, against the Patriots, completely blowing New England out. Uh, I'm Jeff, you you interested in getting involved here? Well, I think the Niners win this game because I think they have some advantages, um, especially with their defense against the Cowboys' red zone offense, which which been atrocious. Their, the red zone offense looks like they don't know what they're hey, doing. Can I, can I, yes. I, I want to one second. Like the knee jerk reaction that people are saying is, "Oh, they need Ezekiel." No, only, only, only one person saying that, and he's wrong about that. <laughs> Um, okay, it just, it's, an, it's an asinine take because you you can just I, and I even put out a video showing like all the red zone runs. I'm like spoon. And I'm like spoon video. Spoon it, but I put out like I had time. I rarely have time to do this. I put out like the 20 red zone runs. I was, can you show me where Zeke Elliott would have been better? The problem is they get to the red zone and they just their play calling just does not match what they're trying to do. It, it's all over the place. They're throwing the ball too much. Uh, you know, part of it is if when their offense line comes fully back healthy, the red zone should be better because as the, as the field narrows down as you get closer to the end zone, right, there's less yards and less yards. Your offense line really has to punch a hole in the defense because safeties are lower. So you got to really drive guys off the ball to find lanes. In the passing game, you have to be more precise and on time because, again, everything's closer, right? There's there's less zones in the, you know, there's less open area. So Dak's got to be a little more crisp in the red zone. He's not doing that so far this season. Um, so the Niners defense in that specific spot, and look, Purdy's played better than I thought he would. If the Niners stay on schedule, I, I think they scored over 30 points now, seven straight regular season games. If he's on schedule, man, the Cowboys defense thrives in rushing the passer, right? They rush the passer very well. And if they can't do that in this game because the Niners run the ball for a second down, screen pass, plex your pass, it kind of mitigates the Cowboys' ability on defense to rush the passer. So I'm not sure it laid three and a half, uh, but I like the Niners. The last thing on the Niners, by the way, McCaffrey is going to is right now on pace for 340 carries this season, 340 carries. Shanahan said he was going to try to get him some rest this year, and he refuses. Like I, I can't put money on on a McCaffrey to win any postseason award with 340 carries uh, a pace right now. I like San Fran. I just think I'm sorry. I like Dallas. I think there's a lot of points. The summer line was San Fran. Dallas pick them. And now we're out to three and a half, some fours. I mean, what's really changed? San Fran's looked really good. I agree with everything you said about them. I mean, they're beautiful to watch with the motion, all, all the skill guys. But I mean, who have they really played? They played the Rams. They played the Cardinals, the Giants and the Steelers. Uh, I, I just think back to that playoff game last year. Dallas really for large chunks of that game, I think was the better team. Dak had a couple of bad interceptions. Dallas dropped interception. Power got hurt. I uh, remember they had the weird situation with the kicker where, where Maher just completely, you know, couldn't make anything and lost his confidence. Um, I, I could just see a 27, 24 type of game that three and a half is the key number in the NFL. More games land on three than anything else. Uh, I'll take the three and a half with Dallas. And I think if you're going to beat San Fran, if you're going to bother them, you have to pressure them. You have to disrupt them. I think Dallas has the pass rush to do that. So I look for a close game. Uh, this is a hell of a game. This, this is uh, you know a little nineties throwback when these teams would play every year in the playoffs, the uniform Sunday night, this, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I like the points here. Yeah, I'm not going to bet the game, but what I will do, Bear, is I'll just take another piece out of the tree and, and bet more on the Niners to win the Super Bowl. I mean, you can find them at six and a quarter if you get creative. Some books at six to one, some at 550. Let's just say that the Niners actually come out and wax Dallas. You know, that, that number one seed is a lot more attainable. And if they have home field, they're going to be basically French doors to the NFC championship, where they'll probably play either Philadelphia or Dallas, and they'll be favored. So uh, I, I really like their their big picture mentality. I think they're good enough on offense and defense. They are healthy, knock on wood to date. I mean, they've been dealing with a lot of injuries over the last five years, but I, I'm more inclined to, to take more San Francisco Super Bowl at like six to one, give or take. I, I really think they're the cream of the crop in the NFC. And I'm surprised because Will looks like he's coaching receivers for the Niners and he's going to take the Cowboys. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, couldn't tell if it was a, a Niners like warm up jacket there. If there was like an Oriole, I, I, I can't tell on the uh, on the shot because he's uh, conflicted between uh, between baseball and, and NFL right now. Uh, uh, yeah, second week of the year, we, we have a, a game in uh, London now. I was going to say Jacksonville, but London and Jacksonville they really kind of are the same thing anyway. The Bills kind of look like the team most people thought that they would look like uh, last week and kind of had their Super Bowl. 
early season per se against Miami. Blew him out. I took the Jaguars plus the five and a half this week. I, I think, obviously, in, a, in an underdog type situation now, uh, the Jaguars getting points in a, in a spot where nobody really expects them to, to compete or win. That's probably in a situation where they're going to play their best football. Buffalo, the emotion of last week, travel, kind of an off week. I, I, I took a flyer with the uh, with the Jags here. Uh, Will any 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 thoughts on uh, Jacksonville Buffalo? Am I am I an idiot for uh, for betting the Jags plus the points? I don't think you are. Um, look, I, I'm just I, I love these Sunday morning games. I'm happy we don't have to watch Desmond Ritter on on, on Sunday and ruin everybody's breakfast. Um, <laughs> look, Jacksonville, can we, can we have the, a, I, got, I, I, I want a oh, mandate no. by the way. Sorry, to oh, I, I, no, no, no. I, I want a mandate. No more New York Giants primetime games. They have two more. No, no more Desmond Ritter Atlanta Falcons standalone games either. Okay, we'll continue. Um, Jacksonville stayed there, you know, this past week. They've been there two weeks in a row, so they're acclimated, they're adjusted. It's, you know, look, you can do pretty well in the NFL if you're just if you try to erase what you saw last week. And with the Buffalo, it's it, it's buy low, sell high, and you know that that was a, a really good buy low spot against Miami. Now maybe you sell them high against Jacksonville. Um, again, this line was three, three and a half over the summer. The five and a half is that dead zone. Not a lot of games land on four, especially five, but uh, it, it would be Jags or nothing for me. No, nothing's you know, strong in terms of conviction, though. I wonder if we get a six. That's certainly possible here. I, I imagine when we get to Saturday and Sunday, more people are going to probably take Buffalo. Nobody wanted to bet Buffalo last week. Everybody wanted Miami. Exactly. Now everybody is jumping on the Buffalo train the very next week, which is sort of life in the NFL when you get on the wrong side of the zigzag here. And didn't we all discuss, hey, like Josh Allen's nine to one to win the MVP yep. and the Bills. Not anymore. Old. Yeah, I mean, he had five touchdowns. So um, all that said, I, I think I think Jags plus 215 money line is not a bad bet. Uh, Will brought it up. They've been there. They've basically been in England for two weeks now. They've 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 become accustomed to the routines there. Buffalo flying high. I mean, this is a perfect time to clip a team that nobody wanted to bet last week, but everybody will bet this week. And and of course, if you're if you're getting five and a half, six, you're down ten late. The back door is wide open for yeah. Jackson. So I'm only looking one way in this one. The one concern I have with Jacksonville is they're just not scoring points on offense. Like they're just not, they have not been able to put the ball in the end zone as much as they would like. We, we know they had seven points last week in on a pick six. They had nine points against Kansas City. They had, I think, only 20 in the early, low 20s, maybe 17 against Houston. Like, can they score enough points if Buffalo is able to put this in the high 20s, low 30s? Are they going to score? 27, 26, 25. Like, I, they haven't shown the ability to do that this season. They, they, that, that's my only concern with the, the Jaguars heading into this game. And another one of those zigzag games that, uh, that I landed on when uh, I'm zigging when everyone else is zagging is uh, I took the Colts. Uh, it's actually, they're two and a half out there now uh, against the Titans. Again, I was on Tennessee last week. Nobody wanted Tennessee last week. Terrible looking team. And they completely annihilated the Bengals. Uh, I actually had the Colts last week, which was lo a loser as well. They uh, fell behind 23 nothing to the Rams before making an unbelievable comeback. I can't believe the Rams wound up pulling that game out in overtime. But uh, I took the Colts here plus a two and a half. Again, again, Titans still offense, I think, can struggle at times. I think that game last week was more of an indictment on the Bengals, uh, as Will was talking about before. So uh, I took the Colts here, grab, get, get, getting the points. So, um, what do you think, Jeff? A good pick, right. bad pick, and different. I have no feel for this game. The Colts each week to me, I, I don't know what to expect from them. Uh, with a young quarterback, they still I think have some ups, ups and downs. We saw last weekend, right? A lot of a lot of down, then a lot of up, then a little bit more down. But I think Tennessee, to your point, they've obviously lost the two road games. They covered the first one. Um, they just have been a different team on the road. At, at home, they feel more comfortable. They're making more plays on offense. I just never trust Tennessee's offense at all times. Like they, their offense to me, so I'm just kind of a stay away for me with with both these offenses that I don't kind of trust throughout 60 minutes at well, two and a half anything, that's a nice uh, teaser piece so at two and a half i just feel like that's a dead number where you know if i can't get the three might as well just use it in a teaser leg and uh this game should be close should be low scoring somebody should win by you know a field goal one score so to me colts is a teaser leg, so, uh, certainly a good play see it's interesting well, you guys well, both we like were... i adam turn off well, go ahead, Sam, go ahead Sammy. well 43 is a low total obviously 
But Chernoff, who who I talk to every week, he loves the over in the game. And he he made a case for Derrick Henry running wild on the Colts D line. And then, you know, say the Colts get Jonathan Taylor back, you you pair him with you know, the weapon that Anthony Richardson has become. And let's also talk about Richardson. He has scored a touchdown in three straight games as a starter, the one game he didn't start, but he has scored at plus 190, plus 150, and plus 105. That's probably going to be minus money really soon because the books always catch up. But they have been very good. And, and Bear, I think you talked about Shane Steichen for Coach of the Year a couple of weeks ago. I, I don't think that's still a bad bet right now. With Everybody's fawning over McDaniel and Dan Campbell. But this guy puts points on the board. And we saw it last week against the Rams. You know, I think this is this total is low, obviously, but there's no margin for error. Like 20 to 20 is likely going to be a push. You're going to get a field goal at some point in overtime, I would think. I think 43 is too low. I, I, I kind of, in, in, in watching far too much of the Rams-Colts game last week, uh, I, I would agree with you because the, the, the Colts, the Colts can have the ball moved on them um, for, for sure. Will, I, I was just, I was thinking what you were talking about with uh, Atlanta. And when you mentioned that teaser leg, and it was something that we were having a conversation with earlier in the week about like adjusted season win totals. And, and you, you hit me up at me immediately, like Atlanta's season win total nine and a half. Oof. And I was like, how are they winning 10 games? And then I, then I looked and I'm like, look at the schedule. Like it's an abomination of a schedule. Like, how much should the schedule really weigh in compared to what we're seeing with this team and this quarterback? Because while the schedule is terrible, you know they're not going to win all those games. And if you, you, you go 500 the rest of the way, I mean, you, you're not going to win 10. So, like, like it, it's a battle between, like, what you see on the schedule and you kind of you're convincing yourself, wow, these, team, these games are really winnable for them as opposed to watching Desmond Renner play quarterback. Yeah, so Falcons under nine and a half. I, I saw it and I just I texted you. I was like, this is the greatest bet ever. They're, I mean, how are you going to win ten games with Desmond Ritter? Once you look at the schedule, it's it's an okay bet. I think it's a good bet. I still look. I'd rather be on the under than the over. But you mentioned it. It's a lot of Tampa, a lot of the Saints. Tampa's played okay, but it's a lot of winnable games. So still enough for me to bet. But I, I do agree. There's uh, there's definitely some value in these season win totals. Look, the books have a lot to do. Like you've got baseball, the price, pitcher props, college football props, NFL. So sometimes they can just you know it, it's a little mechanical with these season win totals they adjust it based on what happened and uh, i think there's some room to bet i i feel like and again it's juiced under five and a half for the giants they are what one and three then they're at miami they're at buffalo they still play philly twice they still play at dallas uh jones is getting hit every time he goes back to pass who knows if he can make it through the year and look if it's tyrod taylor that's not going to go well i mean look at that giant schedule tell me how they get to six wins <laughs> I, I i can't see it at all for them and, and i think another one that i that i uh it landed on as well, and and uh, uh, Jeff was just kind of joking about it. Uh, we, we all we all know Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season as head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they're going to get to nine wins in, in, in that division with, with that offense and Matt Canada and everybody there hating him. I don't know. Good good, good luck with that, uh, Sammy. Is there a, like an adjusted season win total that that might have caught your eye? Yeah, let me match Atlanta nine and a half with Tampa Bay nine and a half. I mean, are Baker Mayfield and the Bucks going to win ten? I can go under at minus 130, 125 if I if I shop around probably. I see 130 at DraftKings right now. I you know, you watch the features and you see the interviews and Jason Lick is like, oh, Baker Mayfield took the linemen of the Caribbean and they're fishing. I'm like, I don't give a damn. Like that that doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Did, didn't the Giants go like fishing or something yes. before that? The Packers game, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that worked out. Yeah. Well let's too, also right? remember yeah, the Bucks have beaten the Vikings and the Bears for crying out loud. Two teams that are just awful right now. It's I know the division stinks. Uh, the Saints still play good D. I I still like the Falcons D in the running game. I I, I know Ritter stinks, but are we all there that Tampa's going to win ten games? Am I missing something? <sighs> well, in that, in that division. Who's winning nine games? Like who? Who's the team that's gonna? Or is that division gonna be one at, at eight and nine? I think it could be one at eight and nine. Because because someone, let's assume someone has nine wins. Obviously, I hope division. so. Because I have Tampa under eight and a half. Maybe someone gets to ten. Luckily, I guess is is the only counter to this, right? I wouldn't put many on anyone to go over, but nine and eight, I guess, is the division winner, right? We assume the NFC South probably but, in nine and eight. Yeah, eight and nine, weren't the like Bucks that. the biggest long shot to win the division? They were yeah. like seven to one to win the division, yep. and now oh, we're no, saying I'm they're with, gonna win. Oh, 
I'm not arguing over. I'm just being a key counterpoint to this. It's like someone's got to win a division at probably nine wins. Maybe someone gets to 10. I'm not wager on it. I'm just throwing that out there that like, you know, division winner with nine wins and maybe they get lucky and get to a, a 10th win at some point in the season. Like it's not un unconceivable that in this division with how bad the division is that someone just has a couple lucky wins and gets that, that, that nine or 10th win. I want to put you on you, put your, uh, your Kansas City Chiefs expert hat on yes. right now. Uh, you were all over that game last week. You said that they always <laughs> seem to have this game where you look up and you're in the fourth quarter and you're like, how is this like 20 to 14 with like six minutes? And they, they, they pulled it out. Now you're going to Minnesota, who Sammy talked about how bad the Vikings are. Sorry, Will. Um, and now you're only laying four, opened at six down to four on the road. Like, hmm. That might that might be now a reaching a playable point to lay the points with the Chiefs. You wouldn't think that they're going to put together another subpar offensive effort like that. But th but that, that's my question. I took a the long way of getting yeah. getting there. Like, what real concerns are there with this offense? Because the defense looks really good, but they just seem to be missing something at the wide receiver yeah. position right now. So. Weirdly, I don't think I ever said this. I think they miss Juju. Like they they miss that intermediate wide receiver. Like they have obviously MVS, who's supposedly the deep guy, uh, who again doesn't catch the ball a lot. And then they have Travis Kelsey, obviously, who's sort of the do all. And they're missing that middle of the field guy from home to throw to. Uh, you know, it, it, it was I guess supposed to be Sky Moore. Maybe it's supposed to be Tony. Maybe it's supposed to be uh, Rice. Uh, Ross is not really that guy. I know Chiefs fans want Ross to play, but they're sort of missing that middle of the field option short intermediate for Mahomes, but they're, they're going to be fine. The, the Chiefs game was so predictable. They get up big. They sort of just like stop trying very hard. Mahomes throws two terrible interceptions, And then, of course, the referees are, who are paid to have the Chiefs win every game, yep. help them out mm -hmm. at the end. So um, glad you finally like, admitted yeah, it. Yeah, I finally admitted that one. Yep, the NFL is paying for the Chiefs. Yep. Um, and so, I, I don't know. I think it, it's at four now. Yeah. People have bed. Oh, geez. They're going to win this game by more than four, right? I would think so. I mean, so. they played terrible in New York and won by three. I mean, they, 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 they should have won by 10. Mahomes slid at the very end. It's a smart play by him. But, like, they had a chance to win that game by – they played a terrible game and should have won by 10 in New York. Are you, Will and Sammy, you guys firing in now on the, uh, the Zach Wilson comeback player of the year uh, tickets <laughs> after that performance on Sunday night? No, oh, DeMar Hamlin already won that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, step foot on the field. Uh, I think it, Zach, I, I Zach think it was predictable – no, it, it was predictable him playing well with Melissa Stark in the building. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a fade opportunity this weekend for them in Denver? Because Absolutely. I, I feel like this, you know, the, the, Absolutely. The, the Zach Wilson thing is great, but it was like a it was like a, a seventeen minute, eighteen minute stretch where he played really well. They 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 hit a bunch of shots against man coverage. Like that was it. Like that was the end of it. And you know, everyone talks about the officiating, blah, blah, blah. It's so, it's so lazy and lame to blame officials for wins and losses. Zach Wilson dropped a shotgun snap. That's why they lost the game. He just flat out dropped a snap, and and that and that cost him three points. Like that's the reason they lost. It's not because of the, the 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 officials. And now he goes on the road. And Denver's defense is atrocious. I get that, but are we expecting back to back weeks of Zach Wilson? I'm not being serviceable. And and, and people who want to harp on that officiating call, the the uh, the, the the sauce gardener holding like the the play earlier in the game where. They the flagged what uh, naughty, not was it naughty for yeah, for a horse, horse collar. collar when yeah that was bad. A, it wasn't a horse collar and and Brees Hall I was grabbing him by the face mask yes. and somehow that was a penalty on like no it, it's amazing only penalties that happen at the end of games mattered you didn't know that like the, this only ones that I did, I did not yeah, know the that. only ones that, that happened in the last two minutes when we slow down the cameras and we slow mo and we show every way play possible then we get the a fit you know the the uh, the the Terry McCauley talk about like, those are the ones that matter nothing happens early in the game matters at all just the ones at the very end are the only ones we talk about at all times on social media Sammy you gonna hop on the uh the Sean Payton train with me this week lay the one and a half Hell no. Are you out of your mind? Let's go to a different game <laughs> quickly. If I would have told the group chat that on October 8th, the Cincinnati Bengals will be laying two and a half against Arizona on the road. How much money would we have you? collectively bet? I mean, oh, I get it. And this all podcast the, yeah, has done a great job of chronicling Cincinnati's weaknesses. Will has been all over this Bengal short all year, and it doesn't look like they're going to make the playoffs. But are we really not going to lay two and a half with the Bengals this weekend? 
I laid three already. Here. I'd like to take the uh, cancel wow. wager option and and find two and, and go to that two and a half and lay that instead. Arizona's I, been I, the I, better the team, though. Is, they really have. Here's a question, though: is is can can the Cardinals rush the passer in a way that affects Joe Burrow? And the answer, I think, is no. Right? Like like the Bengals' problem is that Joe Burrow is sitting back in the pocket and sort of getting getting hammered by pass rushers that can affect him. Like, that's not the Cardinals do, right? Like, like can, can they affect Joe Burrow and make him play a game he doesn't want to play on that bum leg? I think the answer is no. Like, the answer is they can do that. I'm kind of with Sammy here about, like, the Bengals are – I know they're not playing as well, and Will's correct on that, but Arizona can't do the things that, that have bothered Joe Burrow so far this season. Yeah, are you betting I'm, it there? Are you I'm laying 145 money line? What are you doing? I, I I I laid three with the Bengals already, so I, I was not the expecting money line's to get coming it down to too, man. It's like one forty five on the money line. Wow. Perfect. That that that's even better. Like like I I I get it with the Cardinals, but at the same time, if you if you want to shoot holes in, in their season, you had the Washington doing all that they could to keep them in the game week one. You had the Giants, who are Stink. one of the worst teams in the league. You had Dallas without a couple of their starting offensive linemen and Dak pulled Dak, and somehow they had the massive red zone struggles. And then last week, 49ers got up big with the massive game. This week, maybe a look. I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing stuff out there to maybe maybe justify why, why I bet Cincinnati. But but I do think I do think the Bengals are the right side here. Hopefully I'm hopefully. That's the great thing. Either I'm going to be right or, or Will will be right. So we can get, we can promote that we gave out a winner on this game on the pod uh, next week. I'm just looking down the I, slate here for anything else. Go, go. I, I will just play devil's in. advocate. As somebody who has Arizona under five and a half, under four and a half, and under three and a half, like I'm worried I'm going to lose all those. They terrified me. Even last week, like, all right, San Fran gets up big. They're, they're down five with a two point conversion to cut it to three. They just never stop playing. Yeah. Dobbs, look, I mean, I, Dobbs, it's amazing. Zach Wilson goes second in the draft. Dobbs is off the scrap heap. Dobbs looks like a legitimate player. Um, you know, they've gotten something out of these draft picks. They're, they're terrifying to, to bet against. They should really be 4 0 against the spread. They dropped the touchdown in the end zone uh, last week, Ertz, and then I forget who else dropped the second one. So they're feisty. They, they've been okay. Okay, I've been wrong. Everybody's been wrong. Everyone's like, oh, this is going to be the worst team. They're going to win one, maybe two games. They've been okay. Yep. Wh- guys, which double digit dog are you? Are would you would you take the points with the Giants at the Dolphins or the Panthers at the Jeez. at the Lions? Panthers. 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 Detroit Lane that ten just doesn't sit right with me. No, not the 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 fighting Dan Campbells. No, 10, 10 is not the Panthers. I think are is really there a bad third though. option. Like they, they've been. Uh, there's no, 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 there's no, you have one of those two. Those are two double digits so far. Hey, I, well, I'm you can take the, 10 I was and a half next Thursday against yeah. uh, Kansas City. You can take Denver next Thursday plus 10 and a half. I was just getting oh, they're, they're in Kansas City for that, or that's in, yeah. that's in Denver. Arrowhead. I was just going to say, you know, we were talking uh, on the, um, on the college pod yesterday about how we were able to bet Miami to reach the college football yeah. playoff here in New York. I wanted to pull up the. Uh, I guess in New York you can't bet NFL awards because I'm looking for the awards tab here and I don't see it. So I was going to ask: like, Are we in a position now where you could just get your arbitrage calculator out and bet Jalen Dan- uh, Jalen Daniels? Network College, Kansas. Sorry, Will uh, Sammy Jaylen breaking Carter. my injury. Could we, could we, could we bet Jalen Carter and, and Devon Witherspoon? And just arbitrage it out, and you're guaranteeing yourself a profit, especially with Christian Gonzalez out now for the year. Like, isn't it either the defensive rookie of the year? It's going to be Carter or Witherspoon, right? I think yeah, so. I think I'm looking at the odds right now. He's Carter's more visible. Carter's minus one fifteen. Witherspoon one seventy five at DraftKings. Uh, I'm sure you know you got different numbers at different shops, obviously. But if you could get them both at plus money. I don't hate that idea. And then just for context purposes, Bear, after Carter and Witherspoon at minus 110 and plus 75, Brian Branch, Will Anderson, 9-1, to one, and then the next guy, 30-1. to one. No. Yeah. Still a lot of time Brian left, Branch, though. Still a long it, season. It, it, there is. There is. Voice of reason, Will Hill. I like that. Yeah, I do. Just, I mean, that's only if injuries happen, right? I mean, that, that's the long, which which happened in Gonzalez, obviously. But Witherspoon is a, the more visible position, right? Like he's the guy we see making plays. We don't see Carter making plays. Carter's not a sack guy. Like I, I don't know if a, 
rookie of the year is going to be because they have a bunch of tackles for losses and their run stuff rate is really high on PFF. Like to me, it's Witherspoon or nothing, right? I mean, I guess your point, you could, you could both bend it back and forth, but Carter, I mean, what does he have to do? He's got to get more sacks, right? Like Witherspoon, we see him intercepting the ball. We see him making tackles down the box. I, I don't, I think it's hard for Carter to win this award. Sammy, Will, before we let you go, anything, any game or bet or anything you, we uh, we didn't cover here? I know we didn't hit on every game, a couple of games we didn't touch on, but Will, I'll let you go first. Anything out there that you want to uh, share with the people? No, I think we pretty much covered it. It's amazing how fast the season goes by. We wait so long all spring, all summer for this season to get here, and you look up and it's week five. It's like, man, you blink and the season's like a quarter of the way over. So it just goes by quick. So got to enjoy it. It's so funny because before, before like you say it goes by so quick, I, I was kind of joking with you the other day, like I, all week long, I look forward so much to Sunday getting here, NFL, just settle in, watch the games. And then by the end of the day, I am so happy the games are over because I just can't handle the swings yep. and the call. I have the calls. They're down 23, nothing. I'm MFing them up and down and living in there in the game. And it's, a, it's just, you talk about a complete emotional roller coaster and uh, NFL Sunday. So it's the swings are incredible. Sammy, anything? Uh, sorry to interrupt you there, but anything for the people? No worries. It's your show. You can do whatever you want. Um, I, I did trash the Pats earlier, but I, I would probably lay one at home with them. You know, it's one thing to lose to Dak Prescott and Jalen Hurts, but when you start losing a, a banged up Derek Carr with a shoulder issue or Jameis Winston, then it's really torpedo time um, here in New England. I, I think this is a good buy low uh, on the Pats. I don't think they win seven or eight games, but I, I would certainly lay the penny before I would take it uh, with the Saints. And let's also, I want to give a shout out to the crew here. I don't know if we all saw the YouTube short that they put out when Bear was making a live bet last week. Like, He's like licking his lips. Like we're all talking about something and bears not even listening. He's just firing. I, got, in I, got, I, got the, the, I was going to say, I, I was the bears under five and a half. I was licking my lips. I had, I had the little, the little, uh, little honey jar here with the bear and just betting against the bears. It was, it was a perfect opportunity. I was so listening. good. So no, you were not listening. I, I listening. We were watching you on the ISO you know, cam, listen not listening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have this thing in my ear that allows allows me to listen. I, I can multitask. That was like yesterday on the uh, on the uh, on the Zoom call to pre prod. I, we, I, I had a, a cat to my right who was just begging for attention. So I'm like literally like this the entire time, like leaning over. And well, you're also yeah. watching a soccer match and making. Sure I was. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> and we, we survived the we survived the joke. We, the we survived the, the double down on fan or team total going under. It was not a very Atletico Madrid no. performance for the first 45 minutes. Of course but, it wasn't. Yeah, but but yeah. but yeah, yeah. but we yeah. got there. Um, the, Sammy brought up next Thursday night, and we won't have a chance to talk about this. Obviously, the way we recorded. Um, my favorite NFL stat is the Broncos have, have have more recently won a Super Bowl than have beaten the Kansas City Chiefs. Wow. I just had to get that out there. Right? Yeah, I want to make sure Broncos have to understand that. Yeah, they have not beaten the Chiefs since since the middle of 2015 in the regular season, and they won a Super that Bowl. That is a hell of a season. stat. The Chiefs, own, the Chiefs own them. So if it's like a survivor pick, I don't know if you have Kansas City still left. Like The Chiefs are going to beat the Broncos again, and it's funny to laugh at the Broncos fans who get really upset by the Chiefs beating them all the time. Who, it's funny, who top of my head, have, I think those games are close, right? A lot of those games have been close. Denver's been competitive with them. Fangio has been able to, you know, do do a decent job against Mahomes, but yeah, they never beat him. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah but they, they just don't score. Like they, they don't they don't yeah, score. Right. Like, it's Drew Locks, a bunch of Drew Locks and like just the quarterbacks are not healthy and it's just they just Osweiler. Yeah, just, just get, yeah they, Osweiler. Osweiler, yeah. The Brock Lobster, yeah. Is it a is it a rivalry game though? That's an inside joke for Will. Oh. Well, well, Frank Frank Clark is there now, and Frank Clark said no. He said you, you have to win for there to be a rivalry. I'm with him. That's right. But you're right. We 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 did that game. I was at that game a couple of years ago on the final week of the NFL season, where the Chiefs needed the win for the home for the home field, and it, it was a close game. Denver Denver hung around. That Sammy New New Orleans just absolute biggest frauds in the league. I mean, like every year, like we think this team is like oh. They got all these weapons on offense and Derek Clark and and someone has to win the the the, oh. the, the, the NFC South guys. We we we've called the Falcons, the Bucks, and the Saints frauds today. One of them is going to be a playoff team, right? And host, right? They <laughs> yes. just, they, they're going to host a playoff game. They're, like the, like the Cowboys or Eagles are going to an NFC South team in Wild Card Weekend. That'll that'll work out just as well for the NFC South team <laughs> as it did as it did last year. All right. 
Hopefully this week we'll uh, have fewer emotional swings. Hopefully we'll be able to, to get through it. Hopefully it'll be profitable. Until next time, Sammy, Will, Jeff, be well. Sammy P's number on the Ravens there that we are just talking about, kind of yeah. kind of surprising. Fifth tie with the Eagles, they said, right? But they just, just uh, yeah. they just find ways to win. I mean, yeah, they did lose to the Colts, but they, it, 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 there's a thing about watching them play where it, like, it never looks easy. Right, like it, they, it's a great way of putting it. Like they, they win. They won pretty easily against the Browns. Obviously, the, the, the Stefanski decided that he was going to make DTR into into an air raid offense for some reason, throw the ball a thousand times. But like it never. When you watch them play, I never think to myself afterwards, "Man, that was just an easy old win." There, yep. it just always feels like a grind for every Baltimore game, and they're a good spot to be in. Let's uh, let's recap your wagers here before we get to um, the uh, the survivor pick here. You have the Colts plus two and a half. You have Jacksonville, plus five and a half, and the Bengals, minus two and a half. You feel good. I like those. I feel good. I like those. I feel good. Yeah. Hopefully, that's a uh, that's a 3 and all right there, and hopefully, we'll make it a 4 and with the uh, with the best bet later in the show. Let's the Survivor, buddy. Well, last week, it was really, there was very little carnage in Survivor last week. All those big favorites yeah. uh, did wind up winning. Those of you that rolled the dice with the Vikings, congratulations. Uh, you survived. Those of us who... Like yourself, who went with the uh, Jaguars? Yep. That was a uh, kind of kind of another one. It didn't. It was. It didn't look easy, but you never really felt like Arizona was Atlanta. Was rather, or stinks. Was it was in the game? Yeah. And again, here we are. Atlanta's favorite against Houston this week. Oh, Houston's playing good football. They are. Yeah. But again, this is this is one of those because of the NFL type of games where you could see Atlanta maybe winning against Houston coming off the big. The big win at home. Yeah, I'm, I'm not betting on Atlanta. Yeah, Survivor this week, I, it looks kind of straightforward. Like, I don't think there's really one of those, like, really risky type, trendy picks that people are going to be on that, that that could wind up just knocking a whole bunch. Of, like, if there was one, maybe it would be the Eagles, but I really don't know why you would take the Eagles laying four in or just to win the game outright. It against the Rams, like that—that's not a play that I think people would make. I mean, I, I think it would be the Panthers being the Lions would be the play that ru- that ruins everyone's weekend. Well, that, yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. I, yeah. I think, I think the the uh, the Lions are the best. I mean, the Panthers are probably the worst team in the league. They're bad, and, and I think the Lions are again. You obviously, check your your survivor rules because some some pool, the big circle one. Obviously, yeah. Thanksgiving Day is its own entity. And you'll need to save a team or teams for Thanksgiving to give yourself options. But but if you're in one where you're just picking a game a week and Thanksgiving is part of what I'm doing, yeah. Sunday game. I the mean, Lions is a good way to do it. I don't know if I'd lay nine and a half or ten with the Lions, but but I think I don't think the Lions will will lose to will we'll lose at home to to. Uh, Could you do Miami this weekend? I think Miami still has some future value. You obviously you got it. You got a couple of games against the Jets, and you got some other games later where yeah. they have value. But like, uh, yeah, I get the Lions. You still have a couple of games with the Bears, but there are other. I went through the, the grid, and there were other options that week that are fine. So Lions would be my top pick, and if you want the the the, the old risk reward, take a chance. Um, Denver, it, it's Denver. Denver we, yep. we, we got beat by Denver with, against Washington in a game that Washington trailed twenty-one-three, and Denver blew it. But again, it's hard to trust them. But I think it's, it's an opportunity where people kind of are high on the Jets now because Zach Wilson had an okay game against the Chiefs and the Jets <laughs> look so better. Two weeks in a row, it's not going to happen. And yeah, that, that, that's the thing. So I think if you are in a bigger pool where maybe you're going to need some yeah. variance and you maybe want to save some of the better teams for later on to give yourself a little bit of a game theory type of edge, you might want to consider the Broncos this week. All right, Bear, let's get to your best bet of the weekend. Let's make ourselves some money this weekend. Why, why would I have, after just discussing survivor options and having uh, the Broncos as the risk-reward pick, why wouldn't I have the Broncos laying one and a half as my, my best bet this week? Just put myself through like three hours of absolute agony backing a team with a washed-up quarterback and a, <laughs> and, and, and a head coach. We make some, <sighs> some, some, some interesting decisions from time to time. But, but look, this is more of a play against the Jets here. As, as I was getting into, we're not going to get that same okay Zach Wilson that we got 
on, on Sunday night. Agreed. Traveling cross country uh, to Denver. The Jets did beat them last year there, but I think this is a little bit of a different situation. I think Denver is going to be a little healthier this week, and uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll 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 bet against the Jets here, and I'll I'll lay the points with Denver. I think there's a thought that you know the Broncos win last weekend sort of gave them a little bit of life, right? They they, they come back. Um, and you feel kind of better about where you're. Their defense is so suspect, but you're playing Zach Wilson, who has not shown the ability to have back-to-back games like like he did. And even against Kansas City, it was he was good for two quarters, right? It wasn't in the first quarter, and then he dropped a shotgun. Like he just like that's Zach Wilson, right? And so they're on the road. I'm with you here. The Broncos feeling good about themselves after a win. All right, my best bet here um, is uh, Pittsburgh plus four at home against the Ravens. Uh, Mike Tomlin as a home underdog in the regular season is, is 13, uh, six and two against the spread. It's a great spot for Tomlin plus four of the last five games in, in this rivalry have been three points or less. Like it's a, a good spot. I know Kenny Pickett might not play. It might be a good thing. Like Mitch Trubisky running around making plays. But again, the, these, te- these games are low scoring. The under is a good spot here as well. They're low scoring. They're physical. They know each other. Well, they bring out the best in each other because Pittsburgh's offense has not been very good. But I think you you you, you play Ravens team and you, you just the best just comes out of these teams. And I feel this game's going to be right at three point spot, probably under as well. I like the four points, man. This game opened at I think one, like Pittsburgh favored by one, and then they're, they're moved all the way to four. Um, yeah, I see. I see an open Baltimore minus two. Yeah, now it's up to four. And it's that's even, a, that's a and lot, it's man. Even and it's even four and a half at circa. Four and a half at Circa. Well, yeah. I, I just, I, I, I guess we could change the graphic, but Pittsburgh, <laughs> okay, Pittsburgh here plus four. But um, that's, that's a great thing about it, I mean, it, numbers like yeah. changing throughout. It changes as we go through. I just have Pittsburgh plus four here. I, I like backing Tomlin as a home dog. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and it, when you don't believe in Pittsburgh, when you believe in Baltimore, it's a three point game. And we know what this can be 2017. Like we know right. what this is going to be. It's what you were just talking about, how like, it never looks like fun or easy with Correct. the Ravens. It's always. Something. And they have a lot of injuries still. A lot of injuries. No, they do. That's what made that's what made me kind of surprised that Sammy had them rated so high. You kind of what what the ceiling might be if they are able to get healthy at some point. Well, I mean, yeah, it'd be even better in, 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 in a tough AFC. Before we get out of here, guys, I want to remind you about Fox Super Six. It's not too late to play the free Fox Super Six game for week uh, week five. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of ten thousand dollars in weekly cash prizes. Free to play. Free to play and free to read on foxsports.com. I'll have my uh, Super 6 column up there. I'll, I'll uh, kind of handicap and break down the, the, the categories for you to uh, I love it. take, take, it's take, take, thing all week. take under, wait, take under, take under drops. advisement. It, it, it's, it's cool because it kind of, I don't play fantasy sports anymore. I just don't have the time, but it kind of it gives you a little bit like a fantasy flashback combined with, with the, uh, with the wagering aspect. So love it. a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, there we go. Is that it? We're done again. I think that's a, it, buddy. An, an, another it's up one, to you. It's your, it's your an, show. An, another one flew through. I know. You believe it? Week six in college football. Week five in the NFL already. Ah, it's crazy. October's here. Before yeah. we know it, November will be here. It'll be playoff scenarios will be coming out. I know. It'll be. Uh, it will be interesting. So that was fun. Group chat always always fun. Kick, kicking it around with the guys. Always fun to hear you vent and rant about the Chiefs. <sighs> It's not the Chiefs. It's just it's complaining, people, people complaining who, about it, officiating. Enough of it. Enough. I'm with I'm, people. I'm with them about the, uh, the 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 Lane Johnson, Trent Williams kind of. They, 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 they and then they oh, and they over officiated Juwan Taylor afterwards. Like, come on, officials. It, it's it. Well, see, see, here's the thing. Is it is it the prejudice against the Chiefs now with Juwan Taylor or? Oh yeah. I mean, that, which that, which, that, which that, way? That, or that's or the Chiefs got it now. They got to, that's why maybe that's why they call the penalty on sauce because they needed to <laughs> throw one in there to make it look like they actually are against the truth. Do you ever notice how the best teams in sports always get accused of getting all the calls? And you wonder why, because they're the ones that overcome all this, right? They're like the chiefs, you know, the, 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 the safety, of the ship and the safety, the, the horse collar. And they just said, screw it. We'll win anyways. Bad call. So, yeah, exactly. It happens. Get it's, over it. It's, it's football. It's life. It's it, you get bad calls all the time. Make it happen. Well, we made it happen here. Hopefully, we can make a uh, a winning week happen. Uh, for Sammy P, for Will Hill on the Gambling Group thread, for Jeff, I am the Bear. Appreciate you listening to the Bear Bits Podcast. Make sure you uh, subscribe, rate, review, download. Check us out on YouTube if you want to see all of our animated facial expressions while we uh, record this thing as well. And most importantly, remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>